Hare Krishna and Devat Pranam. Today we're doing our video in the vegetable room, the AC cold storage. And uh, it's just a lot of uh, work going on outside, so it's quite bit, uh, loud. So this is a bit removed and isolated. So today we are doing a video on the how to develop the swan-like mentalities of the Paramahamsa sages and how to give up any kind of remnants of the ass-like mentality of those who have this. The ass-like mentality is a demonic quality of those who are like in the line of Denu Kasura, who is a great demon in Braj. So we're trying to give up the ass-like qualities and develop the swan-like qualities. And how we're going to do that, we're going to talk about uh, what Bhaktivinoda Thakur described as a special method to do this. If we have the swan-like mentality, we're able to extract the essence and honor everyone according to their position, as Mahaprabhu instructed. The ass-like mentality, on the other hand, is where we discriminate upon others according to what we think is right or wrong without actually having any realized knowledge ourselves. Our gurus, they reveal the different facets of the Absolute Truth according to our level of qualification. Now, as it is taken by the people and received according to their time, place and circumstance, then people adopt it according to their own customs and culture and then it becomes, uh, there's many different kinds of groups with different customs and traditions. And in this way, we have uh, sectarianism develops but sectarianism is or the ass like mentality is criticizing others putting down others for their own practice of trying to understand and achieve the absolute truth anyone who is trying to develop love of god who's trying to live a proper moral life they should be honored that's the swan like mentality the swans are able to extract milk even when it is diluted with water. So when we follow the absolute truth, naturally certain kinds of mixtures will enter, dilution will occur according to time, place and circumstance. But the swan accepts the essence, looks at the essence and honors that without criticizing or discriminating. Something may not be ideal in what someone is following, but still the swan-like devotees honor and accept the essence. While on the other hand, those with the ass-like mentality, they only criticize. They don't accept the essence. They don't acknowledge the essence and they criticize the external things that are different from their own process. Even in the Madhyam Adhikari, who is at the intermediate stage of devotion, this ass-like mentality can be there. They criticize those at the neophyte stages and think they themselves are so great. But this is still the ass-like mentality that is inhibiting our progress in spiritual life. Therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Gurudev, they teach us tolerate everyone. Never criticize, never complain. Tolerate and honor everyone according to their level. If you don't understand someone's practices, you don't understand the purpose behind it, then you can stay at some distance. But if you have faith in Krishna, the absolute truth, you understand everything is going on under his direction. All these different groups are actually arranged by Sri Krishna himself. They are part of the variety of the absolute truth. That unlimited absolute truth has unlimited variegatedness which manifests in this world as different groups and we should honor them. We can see that rules that are found to be followed in one society may not be compatible with those in another society. That does not mean we should criticize them. You can take the example of a classroom. If you were to try to merge all the groups together, all the people on different levels of qualification into one group with one teacher, one prophet, one guide, and make them all follow the same lessons, then how would anyone benefit from it? In a, in a school, you have, not only do you have, within one school you have different lessons and different grades, but there are different schools. You have primary school, you have secondary, in different countries there are different levels of education, then you can go to college, go to university, 
If you try to put the kindergarten students in the same class with university students and have one teacher who's trying to explain the same thing to all of them, then how, are any, how is anyone going to benefit? That's, uh, so sectarianism doesn't mean that having different groups is bad. That's not the problem. Having different groups is natural. Like the example is given of holy rivers, Jamuna, Ganga, Sarasvati. If you merge them all into one place, the ocean, that's where they come together, then the water is salty, not helpful for anyone. But when they are distinct in their own places, in their own individual places, then they have uh, specialities and they are helpful in each their own ways. So we, the ash like mentality is saying, no, there shouldn't be any different group. That's also one symptom of the ass like mentality. No, 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 there shouldn't be different groups. Make everything being forced into one homogenized whole. That's, imp that's uh, oh, we're all one. But even though we're all part of that same supreme whole, doesn't mean we should not have uh, individuality and, and, and variety. That's very important to remember. And so there's those two sides. The ass like mentality is criticizing others for doing things different thing, differently than how you and your own group does it, and also criticizing the fact that there are different groups and thinking, no, they should all be one, they should all be part of my group. But Krishna has arranged these groups, who are we to say uh, they should be divided or they should be joined even? Both sides is a problem, saying that, no, there are separate groups and that's bogus, or what they do in their group is bogus, they should join my group. Both these mentalities have to be given up. So Bhakti Thakur then describes three kinds of uh, considerations that lead to uh, sectarianism and how we can avoid the pitfalls of developing the sectarian mentality. Sectarianism is a natural a facet of the absolute truth. And so the fact that there are different groups is not the problem. The problem is how we relate with them. So we're going to go through Bhakti Thakur's different uh, levels uh, of this sectarianism viewpoint. The first one is called Alochakagata. That means the external uh, signs, like in different religions, people wear different kinds of attire, different types of garb. That is Alochagata Vichar. The second kind of standard is called Alochanagata Vichar. The consideration that sees difference because everyone has a different way of worshipping, everyone has a different process. Uh, and also, some people, they will worship trees, rivers, mountains as a representation of their God. And those who consider themselves to be more civilized, they criticize them, oh, they're just pagans, or they're gonna, uh, they're gonna go to hell and burn eternally in hellfire. But Krishna has arranged the different levels of faith so that people can gradually progress. And there's an example, like you can think, oh, like Native Americans, for example, they are hunting and killing, and we think they are more, uh, less evolved than the first world people. But this is also, uh, in the first world, we are slaughtering billions of animals in, in great factories with no remorse. And when the Native American is hunting, what do they do? Even if they, uh, they kill one buffalo, but they will honor it, they will pray to it saying, I'm doing this to maintain my tribe, what can I do? But I accept the reaction for this. I'm offering you up to the great spirit. In, 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 even in India, those who are doing uh, goat sacrifices, this is a very abominable practice, but still it's better than mass slaughterhouse societies. Like, better than killing millions of animals a day in a slaughterhouse. You slaughter a goat and you whisper in its ear. The process is, oh, mangsa means I am taking your meat. Mangsa is Sanskrit for meat. Mangsa means mang is me and sa is he in Sanskrit. So today I am killing you and taking your flesh tomorrow or the next, in the next birth, it, according to karma, you will take me. So I'm offering myself to you also. So it's acknowledging the karmic role of this. And therefore, it's, it's more evolved, actually. So this is just going to show that just because someone is following a different practice, Alochanagata, Vichar, 
different process or alochaka gata vichar, they are wearing a different kind of garb. That doesn't mean we should criticize them for that. The Madhya Madhikari in the intermediate stage, he should discriminate in some regard, meaning he has love for God, friendship with devotees, mercy towards those who are trying to advance but who are neophyte, and he is uh, removed from those who are of the very antagonistic mentality to the Lord. But just because there is that difference doesn't mean we should uh, criticize them. Now there's an important story in regards to this. Once there was a, a sage sadhu who was living under a tree outside uh, the, on the outskirts of a town and everyone honored him, gave him donations and they would attend his sacrifice yagyas and uh, his kirtans and bhajan and things like that. But anyone who would come to him when they were going towards the town he would warn them, oh don't go in that town there's a brothel with a famous prostitute and if you go there you will destroy your life she's such a wicked sinful person everyone who would come he would criticize that prostitute and always in this way she was in his mind the activities of that prostitute were in his mind in that way and on the other hand the prostitute she was always condemning herself thinking I'm doing such sinful work such sinful body business as Prabhupada says body business but on the other hand this Sadhu, he is so great, he is so exalted. We're being joined by devotees here. Haribo. Taking the boga, taking the vegetables and fruits. So, what is the difference? The prostitute was always thinking of the sadhu and always repenting for her own activities. And the sadhu was always thinking of her. And so when the sadhu left his body, the so-called sage, then the Yamadudas, the messengers of the god of death, came and dragged him to hell. He said, no, 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 you've got the wrong guy. Go to the brothel and take the prostitute and they said no 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 we've gotten our extractions very carefully we've taken the GPS we've we've come to the right address and they dragged him down just punished in hell and the Vedic tradition of hell is that you suffer in hell until your your karma for that is completed and then you will come back to uh, the earth planet on the other hand the prostitute she was welcomed uh, by the messengers of the god Vishnu in Vaikuntha who sent his messengers to bring her to the spiritual realm. She said, oh, I'm so sinful, degraded. Why are you taking me? Go take that sage, that sadhu. They said, no, 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 we, the Yamadud has already came from. He's already gone to hell. Why have you come for me? I'm engaged in so much sinful activity. He said, no, you are always repentant and you're always glorifying the, the saintly qualities that you perceived in the sage. Therefore, the mind, this is mind over matter. If your mind is in the right place, your heart is in the right place, then you can achieve a good result from that. But if you're externally, alocha gata vichar, externally you look to be very polished, very spiritual, but internally you have so many bad tendencies, so many ash like mentalities, then the result of this ash like mentality is to be kicked by Maya and fall down to a great degraded position. So thank you for watching, thank you for giving us your time. If you have any questions, put down in the comments. Anything, any ideas for future videos, let us know. Hare Krishna, Vat Pranams.